Welcome to the mock exam for my part 3 Java MTA course. In this video we're going to be looking at the answers to the mock questions that we did last time. So do remember if you get all 10 of the answers right, um, then brilliant, you're on the right path. I would suggest moving on or trying my mock exam for the whole uh, MTA exam. If you get seven um, or more, that's great. Um, you would have passed the exam, but you need, just need to make sure that you are revising before the exam just to make sure that you don't fall under that. And if you're getting six or less, then I wouldn't just take the test yet. You need to spend more time in your revision. Um, and a good way to start is uh, looking at my playlist and seeing what areas you struggled with and how you could improve on them. Again, if you found this useful, please like, and if you want to keep updated with um, future mock exams that I do on the MTA, please subscribe to the channel. So let's get started. So uh, for question one, if you haven't done the questions um, yet, go to my previous video or pause the video before I reveal the answer. So in this one, it's looking at the uh, two-dimensional array, and it's looking at how you can access that. So the answer for this one would be seven. It's important that you understand the index starts with zero. So this for the first one would be zero. This would be one and two. So the first value is referring to this array. And then the second value is referring to the elements within that array. So again, this would be zero, this would be one, and this would be two. So this would print out two. Uh, the next one, um, what is the reason for the error? Um, again, we're looking at arrays here. Um, again, pause the video if you haven't answered it. Otherwise, hopefully you've got the number B. So remember with arrays, once you declare an array, the, the values or the uh, values that are stored in it cannot change. You can't add more elements to it. So this means that you either, when initializing or declaring an array, you have to express how many uh, elements will be stored in it. So it has to allocate the memory size. Um, and this can be done by initiali initializing the actual values directly onto the array, or just by telling the computer how many values you will store. So this would produce an error because we haven't told the computer how many elements that we'll store in the array. Question three, we're talking about an array list now. Um, and we're talking about what kind of, what symbol um, allows us to determine what data types will be in our array list. And the answer would be number A. So these symbols here, once we declare an array list, these symbols in between there, we will hold our data type. And that data type will tell us what kind of data we can hold in our array list. Next one, what will be outputted from this code? Um, again, we're looking at string now. We're looking at how we manipulate strings and string objects. The answer we're here that would be printed out would be false. So remember that when we're a string, when we're creating a string, we're actually creating an object. And so with this one, there are two different objects. Even though the values are the same, they're two different objects. And so when we ask to compare them like for like, they would result in being not the same. And so the result would be false. Um, if you're struggling with understanding the difference between why that is true, look at the playlist. Um, and you'll see the difference between the string object and string literal and how it's stored in memory. So this is an important one to look up. Uh, question five, we're talking about the reference types. What are the two reference types below? Um, again, pause the video if it hasn't done it. Otherwise, it's B and D. So the first one is a string. We know a string is a reference type. The second one is the wrapper class integer. So you can actually could change a primitive data type like an, an int or an integer into its a reference type form by wrapping it up into a wrapper class. And we know that it's a wrapper class because of the capital I. And number six, um, this one we're looking at the shortened version of equations just to see whether you understand these operators. So what would be the output of it? 
well the output would be 20 so again um, 5 plus 5 is 10 10 times 2 is 20 so that would result in that number seven we're looking again we're looking at strings and how to manipulate strings so we're looking at the method um, what method would we want to use what string method or what method of that text one object do we want to use to remove the spaces from this um, so pause the video and see if you can answer the question so hopefully you've got the text one dot trim so again we're using the object rather than the string class method we're using the object method and trim allows us just to get rid of those spaces before and after number eight um, this is just looking at the keywords making sure you understand some of the key concepts about strings and the answer for this one is immutable so strings are immutable again if you don't know what that means go to the playlist and have a look about my, uh, 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 on the videos about my strings again another one this is a true and false one and we're looking at the difference between an array list and an array um, the answer would be D so an array is fixed and it can store primitive types and can be inserted into it so that is the the statement that is true everything else has a little bit of an error so an array list is it resizable um, and expects accepts both primitive and reference types it doesn't accept primitive types it only accepts reference types this is one of the reasons why we have to convert um, these primitive types into their wrapper class form before they go into the array list an array can be resized once it's been created that's not true you we can't increase the size of an array once we've initialized it and declared it so that's wrong an array list is fixed well that's wrong you can add to it and take away to it so you can add extra elements to an array list once it's been declared so that each a b and c has an error d is the correct one again if you're getting a bit confused between the difference between an array and an array list have a look at the playlist and have a look at that array list versus array video and the last one if you wanted to combine a long string with uh, multiple variables added throughout the string um, which string method would you use um, for some reason the D is a slightly different color I'm not sure what that is but the answer would be format so if you're printing out um, if you're printing out long string and you wanted to combine um, a number of variables within within that string to print out then B would be the best one so they are all 10 so hopefully you managed to get all 10 right if you're getting one or two wrong have a look at the playlist and there are additional questions on each individual subjects in my videos so identify which areas you're struggling with and then find that corresponding video otherwise uh, thank you for watching and join me in the next section of uh, the next my next video and where we look at our part four